YouTube. I need this. Okay, we're live. Fantastic. Well, thank you everybody for joining us again for another episode of the podcast at Delphi.org. I'm your host, Jim McKeith. Joining me on the line is my co-host, uh, Craig Chapman, down in Austin, Texas. Hello. And David Millington. Now, David, you're not in Austin. You're not in uh, Estonia right now. Where are you at right now? Well, right now, I'm in Recife, Brazil. Wow, Brazil. Where's Recife at? I'm not yeah. familiar with that. Uh, up in the northeast corner. It's very close to the equator. Okay. So you're on a like a round-the-world tour or something right now, right? I am. I am. I'm going around the world. So, um, yeah, I'm uh, here in Brazil for a few days and going to America, visiting you guys. Um, and then after that, taking some holiday in, uh, in Australia. I haven't been back home to Australia for a few years. So going to going to visit family and friends and stuff there. Excellent. But yeah, I'm making, making a full circuit. Uh, so I have never actually been around the world before. I figured it was time. Very nice. So we're going to, I'm actually going to be in Austin next week as well. And you're going to be in Austin and Craig lives in Austin right now. So we should probably like all do the podcast live from one location or something. Just, you know, for craziness sake. I think we should. All right. We'll plan on that. Also on the line with us, we have special guests, uh, Bruno Ferenz from TMS Software. Hello, Jim. Hello. Hello uh, David and Craig. And we have also Holger Flick and Wagner Landgraf. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. So, David, you are in Brazil and you didn't pass by to say hi? <laughs> uh, sadly not. Um, not unless you're, you're in receive. It's just Are a couple of thousand kilometers from here. Oh, that's 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 nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Brazil is I way like, bigger I than I realized. I haven't seen much of Brazil so far, but I, I really like it. So um, hopefully I'll be able to come back again and actually visit more places. Because I'm, I'm working this week, and so I can't really travel around and visit cities. And just sort of, I'm in, you know, in, in the hotel and, and working rather than, than traveling. Well, that's... That's not a vacation. No. But it's 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 different and nicer than being at home. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, I was surprised. I mean, I knew Brazil was big, but having been there and and looked at it, it it's way it was way bigger than I realized it was. Yes, it is. Uh, actually, I'm in South Brazil, so it's it's very far from uh, where David is now. Ah. So we wanted to have now. I I know Wagner, you work with TMS, and Holger, are you working with TMS now as well? Yes, I'm their evangelist, or one of their evangelists right now. Yes. Oh, okay, excellent. Very cool. So we wanted to have uh, you guys on the call today to talk about some of the cool stuff TMS is doing. Uh, a few, about, I guess, about a month ago. We did a roundup of uh, new fee or uh, web development frameworks for Delphi, and then the next day, I think it was, because it was you released it on Delphi's birthday, uh, which is Valentine's Day. You released your new web framework for TMS, and we're like, "Oh my goodness, we just barely missed it!" And this looks really, really cool. So I thought it'd be cool to talk about that. And then, honestly, everything you guys do at TMS is just amazing. So. Whatever, anything, everything else you got going on, anything else we can talk about as well would be fantastic. So, yeah, Bruno, go ahead. I think. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, um, what we actually showed so far is a preview of um, um, something that we had been working on for um, a little bit over a year, um, and which. Um, yeah, we think uh, enables Delphi developers to develop web application clients in a really Delphi way. So uh, the way that we all are used to and the way that we love, uh, the red way of developing applications with um, our components that we love, the language that we love, and uh, create from that 
applications that can target the web and um, in a really easy way with respect to deployment as the resulting web application is actually nothing more than um, HTML and JavaScript files that you can just put on any type of uh, web server, be it uh, a Linux machine or a Windows machine, um, or even a Raspberry Pi with some uh, HTTP server, and you can put your um, files over there and you have your application um, up and running and for um, binding things to um, databases, for example, um, you would then typically use microservices, REST API calls. Um, so you can actually hook up to, for example, our TMS X data uh, server that provides a REST API to your databases. But you can as well hook up to, uh, for example, Embarcadero Red Server. Uh, Bob Swart showed the session here in the Netherlands last week on Friday. He showed the session where he hooked up um, our uh, web client development uh, to an Embarcadero Rust, uh, REST server. Um, so I would say that um, we had this uh, dream for a long time to have the tools to create web applications in a way that we have created VCL and uh, FMX applications for a long time and uh, have this ease of use, speed of development um, with, with the tool that we have, um, that we are working hard on now and of which we showed that preview on uh, February 14th. One thing I thought was really interesting about uh, your uh, web framework. What is it? The title is it Web Core or Develop Web? Or I'm not sure what the correct title is for it. Yeah, so, actually, I wonder, uh, Jim, if we can switch. Can we switch yeah. screens that you see something from me? I sure can. Change presenter. No. There you go. You have control now. And Wagner, there was a comment here that's a little hard to hear you. So if you could speak a, a little more, get closer to the mic or something like that, possibly. Okay. Okay. Can you see? Can you see the screen now? Yep, I see the screen now. Okay. So um, here is a little bit an overview of what it actually is, and also um, with respect to naming, that might perhaps be confusing. Um, so we have TMS Web Core, which is the foundation or the basis of uh, everything. And uh, TMS Web Core actually consists of a uh, Delphi or Pascal to JavaScript compiler, the RTL library, and also um, a Pascal interface to um, the full API of the browser, what's inside of the browser. So this, it is on top of this web core um, that we built uh, web applications and um, everything that fits in this um, model of creating web applications we put that under the umbrella tms radical web because we love the word rat <laughs> and so we um, think tms radical web fits uh, well the name and so part of that is the web core which is um, uh, integration in the Delphi IDE of this uh, Pascal to JavaScript compiler and all the UI controls components, but there are also non-visual components uh, that are available. Um, and next to this TMS web core fitting under this TMS radical web umbrella is also our uh, range of FNC components that ha we have now also enabled for use in uh, web applications. Uh, maybe I can uh, have an, uh, some extra words on that uh, later. We also enable the use of uh, jQuery UI controls from our web core. And finally, uh, it is also open to consume uh, several kinds of uh, services, REST services, cloud services. Um, and for example, 
uh, also integration with our Xdata server, but also Embarcadero Red server could fit in uh, that box. And so Web Core is really the core, as the name implies, uh, that enables uh, to put everything together um, to create web applications from it. So this was this was the thing I thought was really interesting about um, what you had offering here because there are other frameworks out there that give you the ability to uh, design in the Delphi ID, right? De put down components and then build a web application. There are other frameworks out there that give you the um, cross compiler, right? The object Pascal to JavaScript compiler. And there are other frameworks out there that give you the, the DOM. But what you did is brought all those different pieces together in a whole new system with the data access controls, with the jQuery components, all in one uh, solution, which I thought was perfect. <laughs> and Craig and I were talking, and Craig's like, this might be the holy grail of web development framework right here. <laughs> Just because... Yeah, what makes it so, yeah, what makes it even better is that it's all built like with a great uh, class model and an architecture that allows for it to be extended, you know? So it, there's really... No, for example, Bruno just showed the other day on his blog that you can build your own custom components. And guess what? These custom components can use anything that the framework offers. So these custom components can use elements that are in their FNC library and already existing components from their base components. So the limits, there, there's basically no limit to what you can do. And what Bruno hasn't focused on so far is that big problem of other web frameworks usually is that there are web pages already so you have to build an application that fits into a certain web page that already exists and this is also another strong point of the framework because you can build your application and you can build like references to already existing style elements or html elements and then your web application will fit into an already existing page template or into an existing CSS style sheet. So if you're not feeling comfortable doing web design, let They're your web designer do all the work. Already, so and uh, the web designer gives you like the design elements and the placement and everything is handled by the CSS. And uh, yeah, the framework, you can focus on building the application in Delphi. Yeah, exactly. Which uh, was very cool. I think, were you going to say something, Craig? I thought you were started talking there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was just jumping on what I'd said before because um, from what I understand with TMS Web Core, you are literally compiling Pascal code down to JavaScript. So it's kind of the equivalent of, um, I think it, correct me if I'm wrong here, it grew out of the pass to JS um, script compiler. Uh, and so effectively you can do, I mean, if you, if you didn't want to use the framework at all, uh, you could still generate HTML pages with straight Pascal code, which gives you just the finest level of control possible over, uh, over what you're doing with other frameworks, you kind of, uh, stuck with the control set that they give you. Uh, but with this, I think you get to go about beyond that. Um, do you still see my screen? Yes. Yes. Well, yep. maybe I can give you um, a, a very quick demonstration of this dual approach where you can actually uh, de design your user interface for the web application in a red way with the Delphi designer. So here we have that typical Delphi example that we all remember from 1995, where we have an edit control, a button, and a memo in this case, also a um, combo box. And the code is actually not much more then um, adding the value of the edit control in the combo box in the memo control, setting some labels. So this actually not much more uh, than that. If I run this application, I'm now uh, compiling it. And it's actually, um, you can see an, um, an executable, but that executable is actually not nothing else then uh, something that jump starts the browser on the right page um, and other than that the xc itself serves no purpose uh, what is being generated is an html and a javascript file and here we have our application where i can uh, add what we expect um, like this 
it works like an VCL application um, in terms of how the user interface looks, in terms of how you code the thing. And now um, you see this simple demo and it shows the controls in, an, in a standard way how they are supposed to look in the browser. Now, what I can do is um, this same application, so the same concept, I will uh, tie it to Bootstrap and I will use Bootstrap to um, style our user interface. So I have here exactly the same um, user interface controls, web controls, and actually the, the, the same code. The only difference that I have here is that I'm um, using um, Bootstrap for styling. So if we go and have a look at the HTML file that is associated, um, it's actually this one that I need that is associated with the project. And it's opening up right here. And you can see that I have inserted here um, the Bootstrap CSS file. Now, how can I hook up what I have in Bootstrap um, in the whole range of CSS classes available in Bootstrap? I can hook that up to my control via the element class name, which is here set for this edit control to form control. I have my button, and this is uh, the CSS class button primary. I have my memo control, which is also a form control. Uh, my combo box, I did not assign to a uh, bootstrap class just to show that you can mix up uh, bootstrap um, fully or partially as you want. If I run now this application, I have the same application, but you can see from the focus border, for example, here, that I have already a bootstrap style applied. So that's a kind of second level of control of how your user interface uh, looks. But we can go a step further, and now uh, I will show how I can use the fully the same logic, but have my uh, user interface um, done completely in HTML. And uh, so I have here the HTML of my form. It will look a little bit uh, large and um, you will see immediately what I mean. But if we look at all the elements that are in this HTML, I'm trying to look up the, the thing that I want. Okay, here. We have an input control, an HTML input control, and it has an ID EDT. Here we have a memo control, which is text area HTML element with an ID mem. And here we have um, a combo box. Uh, let's bring up the combo box. This, um, if I'm you see this is really something for here is the combo box sorry so this is the select html element with id cell so now i want to use that user interface that design that was fully created in html and actually hook it up to my user interface control logic and i do that via the properties elements id so here i make the connection between this edit control via the ID of the HTML elements. Same for uh, the button, same for the memo, and my combo box is also hooked up via the element ID. My code is uh, still the same. Um, as you can see, I still do web combo box item dot add web edit dot text, etc. So if I now run this um, application, the user interface that I'm getting is actually this. So what we actually uh, did was um, we brought together all the HTML and CSS that is actually used and applied on our own website, and we integrated in that HTML, CSS, um, this web application. With that, we get, for example, these CSS animation stuff where you see the, the things animate as I hover over them, but you also get the responsive design. So if I change the width of my browser, you can see 
that the boxes react in a responsive way. The application behavior is still defined by Delphi. So if I type here, hello world, and perform ads, I still uh, see uh, the same behavior. I can select the combo box and you can see that the label uh, changes. So here we could have possibly a complete separation of the design of your web application page and your user interface control uh, logic, which is uh, done entirely from uh, the Delphi IDE, from a Delphi form, in the way that we have been used to for the last uh, 23 years. No. This is fantastic. One question I have, you have the index HTML and the unit one HTML. What's the difference between the two files there? Uh, index HTML, uh, you can consider that a project based um, HTML file. Uh, and then for each form in your application, you would have an um, HTML file. So if you would have multiple forms, you will, you would have multiple uh, HTML files, uh, one for each form. And then the final uh, compiled output is, what does that look like? Is it a single, is that all go into yeah. the one H, index HTML file or? Let's have a look at um, how the output uh, looks like for such an application. So we have this, um, I start with a simple one and here you can see the output that was generated. So you can see that it was generated just some moments ago. You have that main uh, index.html file. You have the application JavaScript file. Here, because we are compiling in debug mode, we have a source map file, and source map file is used to provide debugging uh, directly from your Pascal code from the browser. Maybe I can spend a moment to uh, show how that uh, works. And uh, here we have our form HTML file. I don't exactly remember from where the icon comes. Uh, I'm not sure about that one, but these, these one are the only ones that make up your uh, web application in this case. So uh, now maybe I can Yes. When, when you're browsing, when you're uh, using the web interface, it's, it's in index. Where does the unit HTML come in when you're running it? This one. You mean this one? Yes, that one. That one is being loaded when uh, the first form, your let's say your main form, uh, is shown on uh, the screen. So uh, in your source code, if we have a look at uh, the project source code, here you can see application.createForm. Right. And this is where the application object, similar to the application object that you have in a Windows VCL application, where it will create an instance of the class tform1, which is uh, here, tform1. So it will create a class. Uh, an instance of this class, and it will load the associated unit1.html file uh, because this one defines uh, the content of uh, of this form. So it loads the unit1.html into the index.html? Correct. Okay. Yes. That's yes. what I was trying to understand. Now, one thing, uh, if I understand correctly, also, because this is using the... Um, your FNC, which lets you have the same components across multiple platforms. Can I take this same project and run it as a uh, VCL application as well? Or is it is this a project specifically a web application? Um, it is actually a web application, but uh, if you do some clever structuring of your code, you can create an application that targets uh, multiple um, platforms, uh, for example, um, you can create an application that targets uh, VCL, FMX, um, and also the web. Um, right, okay. We can come to that in a moment. Uh, maybe 
I can first of all show how you can do the debugging. Yes, that was actually in in the comments. I was going to say there's a Ian says he definitely wants to see debugging, and and I will mention this as well in the comments. There was a little bit of a uh, a war broke out about uh, the holy grail of web frameworks, and I said, well, there's lots of good ones out there, really, really, and that's one thing I love about Delphi is that we have this incredibly rich ecosystem, you know, with with uh, TMS and other players, Unigui and such. So. You know, pick the one that works best for the project you're doing today and tomorrow. You got another one you can choose from. So, anyway, so go ahead. Let's have a brief uh, so, look. Bruno, it's, it's David here. So, yes. just just before you go on to debugging, I just wanted to, to ask about the demo that, that you just gave. Um, so, if I understand correctly, when you design the form and, and you have the controls there that you see within the Dolphin Designer, uh, but you're actually running within a different web page, have you and and and, and you assign the the element IDs? Uh, that's so that a, a designer can create a, a web page and has the various controls somewhere. And the designer and Delphi, they're effectively proxy objects that you can use to help write the code. When you actually run, those objects are bound to the existing HTML objects in the actual web page. Is that, is that anything? Yes. All right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very, very neat. That's correct, uh, David. You have the full control over your IDE, you have the full completion, you can navigate the source code in the IDE. So to you as a developer, it really feels like developing a desktop application, not like a web application. You don't need to take care of any aspects that you deploy to the web that's being handled you know, by the framework that it ends up on the web and not on the desktop. And this would also really help separate designing the website from implementing the the code as well, because you can you can design the functionality and the, the app here and, and test it all locally. At the same time, the designer is, is figuring out the website and then um, you know, later on uh, hook up the controls so it actually uses the ones the designer created later. Yeah, and with uh, what um, Jim just asked, with FNC, you cannot only, like normally if you build an application for different frameworks, you have certain code that these applications share with each other. Obviously, mostly it's not code that's for the graphical user interface, but with FNC, you have the advantage that your controls have the same properties and the same methods and the same events on the different frameworks. So for example, if you use a control from FNC, let's take the planner, it not only looks the same way in BCL as it looks in FireMonkey or the web now, it also has the same properties and events. So the learning curve is significantly lower and you can even share code that deals with drawing things on a canvas, for example, between different platforms. So that's a huge advantage. Yeah, I, I remember a couple of years ago, um, you had a, uh, uh, a TMS meeting in, I think it was Meerbusch in, um, in Germany. And yeah, uh, you showed a preview then of the, the FMA, like the common FNC, the, uh, you know, the, the common base controls has allowed you to write controls of targeting both FMX and VCL. It, it was very impressive. And so this, this web now is a, a third target added to that. Is that, is that right? Yes, that's right. Uh, so yeah. actually, if our own controls and if someone else would have written controls against the a, uh, FNC uh, interface, that would mean that you would now get the control that is also working on the web without doing any effort on the side of the control code. So you, you, your control code just is exactly the same uh, between using it on a VCL, on an FMX or on a web application. Does that mean you can have one control or, or do you have to have still have to have like different actual classes for FMX and VCL and web. Because I, I, I saw these controls here with things like you know, T web memo rather than a, a T um, you know, T TMS memo or something like that. Yes, but for FNC they have uh, exactly the same name. Um, and this this is for technical reasons that we could not register um, T edit for the web framework at the same time as a T-edit that is uh, used uh, for VCL. Right. So yep. that, that's actually an, a limitation in the IDE that we cannot re register the classes with the same name twice. Yeah. But I, 
I propose that we um, have a quick look at FNC uh, in a few moments and, and first have a quick look at the debugging capabilities. So I added here some, some extra lines of code and when I run this application, uh, when it is uh, up and running in the browser, now open up um, our browser um, debugger. So it's here. And now when I do control P, I can uh, go to um, unit one dot pass should be somewhere here. Where is it? Here it is. So here, here you can see um, the code that we uh, have in our the form class implementation. And so here we see what I added uh, just a few seconds ago. And if I would set would set a breakpoint here, when I click this button, this breakpoint breakpoint will be triggered. So here, I will add some text. Click add. And now I'm hitting that breakpoint, right? And now I can step through that code. And you can see that um, it also can evaluate the values. Uh, and you can uh, step through the code. You see uh, now when I go over this line, you can see that it was effectively added in the memo control here. So it's basically um, debugging. Uh, like you are uh, used to in an um, VCL application, but you do it from uh, the browser in this case, and you have the convenience of uh, doing all that uh, directly from Pascal code. Is this a plugin to Chrome to let you do this, or is this because of the magic of using JavaScript as a uh, intermediary layer? Or how does this black magic here happen? <laughs> This is uh, actually available out of the box, um, both in a Chrome browser and also a Firefox browser at this moment. Maybe it will be available in other browsers in the future, but at this moment it is available out of the box via a technique of uh, providing source mapping files. So, ah. so as, as you can see here, source mapped from, um, from this project uh, so if you provide a source map file in the right format with all the right things, um, if that is available, the browser debugger can directly map the Pascal code to the underlying JavaScript code because actually the JavaScript for, uh, code is uh, still also accessible if, if you would, um, would have... Let me see if I can quickly find... You're missing an E in web edit in your search. It was something like button click, I think. Button click. No, it, it must be somewhere in here. But as you can see, it's uh, way more easier than... Uh, it's way more easy to uh, look at the Pascal code. This is the entire application uh, JavaScript code. Now, I, I'm assuming that because you're using this, there is a, a bit of overhead just for the base framework. But once that's yes. taken into account, it uh, scales up probably fairly. Here we, there it is. Yep. Yeah, here I, I found that this is the equivalent JavaScript code that was generated from that Pascal code. So you can as well, of course, debug uh, in, um, so you, you see here the corresponding JavaScript code. If you would not have that map file available, you could use that technique to uh, debug it. But I think we all prefer uh, debug in Pascal. Yeah. So this, this essentially is making um, Delphi into like a TypeScript where it's, cause like, I mean, that's you see like CoffeeScript was the first one and then there's TypeScript and there's a couple other ones that are like, everybody's saying, okay, JavaScript is powerful, but no one wants to work with it. So let's make some sort of higher level implementation that lets you use a real language and then 
uh, make it JavaScript behind the scenes. So JavaScript becomes the assembly language. I think Nick Hodges said that JavaScript is the assembly language of the web. And that's essentially what you're doing here is, right, JavaScript becomes the assembly language, but you still get to work in your Delphi because it's better. Correct. Yes, that's that's our idea. And uh, yeah, we love Delphi, so we want to do everything in Delphi. <laughs> yeah. Now, you also mentioned, uh, there's a question here about if uh, the... As far as like data access, right? If, if you have a, you have your X data or a RAD server or something like that, if you wanted to leverage a multi-tier solution, you can use this to build your front end, and then keep your back end all in some sort of a, a third tier, right? That's that's correct. Um, I propose that um, maybe I quickly go over as to show something in FNC. And uh, then we can turn over to Wagner, who knows all about uh, doing backend stuff. Does that I just sound have a quick good question? To you? I just have a quick question while we're on the subject of debugging and the uh, you know, the Delphi to JavaScript transformation. So how how did you do that? I mean, did you write your own Delphi language compiler or cross compiler? So we use uh, the past to GS uh, compiler which is uh, an open source uh, project and an offspring from uh, the free Pascal compiler. All right. So let's um, have a quick look at uh, maybe FNC. And I would like to show this via, um, and here you have this um, VCL based FNC application. And which is actually, this is the purpose of this demo application is to show with PV guides. Uh, we actually use a uh, REST service that returns the TV programs from different TV channels. And we show the schedule of these TV programs in a planner control. And so here we have our user interface uh, logic, which is uh, actually configuring a little bit the planner, etc. cetera. Um, but the actual logic um, is here in this unit uh, we call it ubl for um, unit with uh, business logic and here here is the code let me have a look um, here is the code that retrieves the schedule from the tv program um, as json and parses the json and um, presents everything in this planner so this this planner that you see on the form this is an fnc planner um, and here in used in a vcl application so when i run this application it produces a windows executable and you can see here uh, tv programs running at this moment so you see the time the actual time that we have now and in green, the TV show that are ac active right now on these different uh, TV channels. Notice that there are some hints that it uh, displays, etc. cetera. Um, and so what we did is we reused all that code to create a web application from it. So if I now open the demo FNC planner the tv guide demo here we have the web version of this uh, demo and if i open this unit you see here the fnc planner on my form you see that it's, it's exactly the same component tms fnc planner you see uh, some initialization uh, code and you can see that the business logic which is in this file ubl so this is the exact, oh, it's not the right one. Let me open this file. So here you can see the exact same code, getting the HTML, the JSON for the TV shows, parsing it, and then adding um, adding the TV shows in the planner. Now so that if it, I run this. Is yes. that the same UBL and same unit one file that we have saw before that is in a different project? The unit one file is a little bit different, um, but this, it's exactly the same UBL file. Okay. But in the unit one, there isn't that much um, 
is just hosting the FNC planner control and that's it's all the initialization of the FNC planner and loading up the um, items of the program is done in that UBL file. So here you can see that FNC planner running in our uh, browser and you can see also in green is it's actually it's completely the same up to the hints that also um, work here in uh, our browser. And that, uh, I think, shows a little bit um, how powerful it is to, if you had your applications based on FNC, how powerful it is to uh, migrate these to uh, web applications. Now, it, where is UBL running in this case? Is it turned into JavaScript as well? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is comp is fully compiled to JavaScript. Uh, if we have a look at the resulting... Because uh, I saw you had an ifdef there, Win32, and so I was just curious. Yes, uh, that is because uh, some of the logic uh, is only applicable to Win32. Um, actually, that same unit, UBL, uh, we use it in uh, for VCL, Win32, but also uh, we have it running for FMX, for all the FMX targets. And uh, now also for um, the web, if we have a look at the resulting files. So let me have a look and make a detailed view. You can see the files have been uh, generated uh, as we speak. Uh, so here we have the application JavaScript file. We have the index file, so the project uh, main file, HTML file. And we have our form file, the unit one. And we have some uh, image resources. Um, so we have that PNG uh, to delete items from uh, the planner. Um, these, these little PNG files are also uh, generated from uh, this application. OK. And so, so and actually, if, if you would if you would deploy this file set to your web server, throw them somewhere in a folder on your web server, you have this application up and running uh, on the web. Right, and so you just point their browser at the index HTML and it loads the rest of those files in as necessary. Correct, yes. Okay. So actually that is, that is what we did uh, on our website where we integrated uh, these demos. It has now actually become easier than ever to demo also our FNC controls, uh, thanks to. Oh, that's not the one I'm looking for. That's another planner demo, but actually, it's the same concept. Uh, here you can see a little bit different view, but it's that same uh, planner that is used uh, for a different. Here is the TV guide. Um, so this is the index.html file from, that we put in this folder uh, that is uh, shown uh, here on our website. So everyone can access that uh, demo uh, right away. I appreciate you, that you do that, by the way. I, there's been so many times that I've gone to somebody that makes some sort of web framework, and it's like their entire website, there's nothing to do with their web framework there except pictures. And it's like, if it's a web framework, let me run it on the web. <laughs> So thank you. Yes, exactly. So we have here we have here a bunch of uh, demos available. This is also a nice one. We have integrated Google Maps, uh, so you can add markers, uh, you can um, find addresses, etc. So if you want to know where we are, here is the office, the street where we are right now. Belgium, of course, set the marker on address. And yeah, here it is where we are in our office. So this is a sample also directly usable from our website that shows um, integration with services like um, Google Maps also.
Excellent. And so now Wagner's going to show us how to do this over multiple tiers with your X data now, right? Yeah, Wagner, you're ready for it? Yes. Uh, should I share my screen somehow? I don't know how to. Yep, I'll make you the that. presenter. So we're going to look at your screen now. You should have a prompt asking you to share your screen. Do you see my screen now? Yes, we do. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Uh, I just want to get rid of... Okay. Uh, so, uh, there, of course, are questions about how to connect the... How to use the backend uh, with Delphi. Of course, uh, as you might have seen, this is different from... Uh, from other frame, Delphi frameworks like uh, Interweb, for example, because uh, since the previous frameworks require you to compile your code in Delphi, your web application will, will need to have a backend in Delphi. This is not the case here because the front end is just uh, HTML and uh, JavaScript files. So uh, you don't need a backend but for the, for the web interface. But of course, if you want to build an application with data, you need uh, to provide data to it. And yes, you can simply reuse what you have in Delphi, either in DataSnap or uh, XData or whatever backend you write your code with, especially if it's a REST server. So you can just use, just as you can do with a, a Delphi desktop application, you can connect to your REST server. You can do that from uh, the web interface, okay? And uh, but with XData, which is our framework for the backend, we have uh, done some special integration. We have added more integration in a way to make the experience more high level and red, as you know. We all love the name, as Bruno said. <laughs> And uh, with, uh, we, have, we provide some metadata to make the experience more Delphi-like. I will show you how. This is the, the first example that uh, connects to a raw XData server. Uh, let me show the server in action here. It's a simple one. Uh, can you see the, the, my yes, screen the, zoom it here? The JSON, right. yep. Yes. Uh, so this is the root of the server we have running now. It's, as you see, it's a public address. It's a very basic one, which provides these resources here. So for example, if I type slash artist, we can see the JSON that it returns. There are three resources there. So you have in this artist uh, endpoint here, you have, it's a REST server, so you can post to create new artists or I can use an address for a specific artist here, and I can uh, send request delete or put or uh, to edit the resource, of course, with using REST HTTP commands. Mm -hmm. And from the client here, we have added some uh, design time components here. This is the X data connection which uh, the main, main property here is the root URL of my REST server, all right, my XData server, which is the same as I have shown in the browser there. And we also provide this XData web client, which uh, I can associate with the XData connection. As I said, we have uh, regular components here for HTTP client or REST client to access any REST server you need but the difference here for this specific X data web client is that it, it gets the metadata from the server. So you have more high level properties like X data web client dot list or dot get, for example. So it's a, uh, so uh, list my uh, artist resources or get artist resource with ID one, for example. So we have several uh, comments here for the REST actions. 
and for each of them we have a comment here directly from the web client okay uh, if I run this application we'll have it here let me open the debugger here so you can see the network so for example it I it retrieves dynamically here for me the the entities the resources I have in the server because of the metadata so I can choose here the to work with artists and I can simply ask please re, uh, request retrieve the artist with ID one so it returns the JSON here all right and of course you can see that from the browser network debugging here that we have the HTTP request to the proper address here mm -hmm. HTTP slash music slash artist so this is just a basic low-level operations here with the with the rest server for example if i want to update the entity with id1 i can type here a different name put and i have here my request all right and uh, if i go to the browser here i can see that the information was modified so it's a that's is it's the very low level stuff with the X data. You can have your backend server in Delphi, and but from the web, it's easy to edit data. And we went to a, a further level here. That let me try to show this another application is that we have abstracted the REST communication in a T data set way. So uh, you can even code your front end in an even more Delphi-like way, which is using data sets. And it will somehow translate uh, between codes, the, not, it will translate the paradigm of the data set to the REST, HTTP REST way to work. Uh, let me show this example here. We have the same X data connection again, all right, with the URL configured here. But this time, instead of uh, web client, we have a component named XData Web Dataset. And in the same way, I have this component connection to the XData connection. And, but I can choose here the entity set name. That will be analog to a table name, for example, since you have seen that I have all these resources here. Right, that uh, right. are available from my REST server. So those are, in a way, my tables between codes. Of course, they are REST resources, but in the backend server, in the, in the end, they are tables in the database. So I choose here my table name or entity set name artist, and the rest of it is pretty much the same what I could do in Delphi. We, have, we connect the data source to the data set, and uh, we have this grid adapter here, which is just a glue between the grid and the data source. So we don't have, we don't need to have a DB version of our grid here. We just connect the two things. And to show a different one here, I'm using the JQX grid, which is a grid based on the jQuery framework, J, the jQuery, jQuery widgets framework. And the code in have here is, is even simpler. We just have a connected property set to true here upon form creation. And on the unconnect event, we just load the data set. All right? If I run the application here, can see that it made all the connections for us so it shows in the grids the content of the data set and of course in the network let me refresh the page here here we have the the two connections that it does to it performs to the rest server the first one is just the model 
which is the metadata of the server. It, it does that only once per application. And then it does the proper request for the ar artists there. Okay? Okay. So this is another example of how we try to abstract the Delphi way of working, in this case, the data set. But uh, with under the hood, it does it in the web way, uh, connecting to the server, performing the puts, posts, and get requests uh, to that. So you can use your X data server in a very Delphi like way. And, wow. uh, I think that's it. Yeah, very cool. There's one question here about uh, session management. That would be something optional you could do on the server side with like a token on the client. Is that right? Yes. Uh, you have all the options you need here because uh, you are in the, your, Del your backend is Delphi. So it's just exactly the way you, you are used to. But uh, for a, an application like that, which is a single page application, which is the one that TMS Web generates, there is not much uh, uh, a state management in the backend. Uh, for the web, for the in user interface, the X data server is just data. And uh, so to control a session is not exactly a session of the of the user interface. What we use, usually do here is use uh, tokens like uh, JSON Web Tokens, where your client holds that token in the browser for a while and use that token to get data from the, from the server. The server doesn't know, uh, doesn't uh, have a state, which is great because you have a more scalable uh, setup. And, but yes, you can use tokens to to log in and control the session between codes of the application. Wow. Excellent. Very cool. And I know Bruno mentioned earlier you could use, if you, I guess, uh, Brad server or if you had a data snap server, you could totally use that as well or X data. So, again, lots of options to choose from here. Yes. Of course, you can use the, the, the REST uh, requests. Uh, component to request the JSON, like I, do, I did in the first one. Yep. The difference is that for the data set, for example, you have to bring the data <laughs> manually, the JSON, and then put in the data set to show in the grid or whatever you want to show it. Yep. Very cool. Well, it's top of the hour here, so that was that was really exciting. I was I was blown away. <laughs> I was I thought this was very cool, but the debugging especially was very cool. And then, all you know, just seeing how well this comes together as a total solution was just very very impressive. So, yeah, I have to agree there. I've, I've seen a bunch of blog posts um, when when you started releasing it, and I and I read through those, um, and it sounded very good. But seeing it uh, live in a demo like this is is really impressive stuff. So now, if somebody wants more information, they can just come here to your website. And uh, is this available as a product yet, or is it part of your all-access packs package? Or what's the best way to take advantage of this? At this uh, very moment, it is available for all-access users because uh, simply they have all access to everything we have on offer, including this preview of our um, web core product. Uh, there is not yet an, a version available outside this all access for the very simple reason that technically we do not yet have a trial version. Um, you will understand uh. that this uh, Pascal to GS compiler is at this, at this moment. Um, it needs all source code of components. And so if we would have to create a version that includes all source code of all components, there's not much a point in making a trial version. So we are working very hard at this moment to enable us to consume binary files and that will enable us to uh, have a separate trial version uh, and as soon as that is ready uh, we will uh, make it available. So for now just for the reasons of um, having only a full version it is um, included as a preview in all access when we have um, polished everything to, to the, the level of quality that we really want, uh, it will also be released as a separate, uh, full uh, available product. 
Very cool. Fantastic. All right. Well, if, thank you. Uh, if, if you want to um, learn a little bit about it, I, I would suggest um, to go uh, to our website, the page that you have right now. You can see there are videos where Holger is explaining all kinds of things, including some uh, in German language, uh, where he is explaining the WebCore product and uh, more videos will be produced in the coming weeks and months. And also you can play with the demos uh, directly from our web page. Excellent. Oh, one last question I had. Um, what if you wanted to use uh, ext.js? Is there a way you could use that as the front end on here? Actually, technically, that should be possible, yes, uh, because uh, as you have seen in the demo uh, that Wagner showed, he was there integrating uh, a jQuery um, external grid uh, created by the company JQ Widgets. Uh, so we interface the Pascal code to jQuery code, and nothing would prevent you to interface your Pascal code with the JavaScript from XGS or actually any other uh, JavaScript framework. Uh, the, the same thing is for the Google Maps demo I showed. There we uh, did some interfacing of uh, Pascal code with the JavaScript code that Google, um, the, the JavaScript APIs that Google offers for their uh, mapping components. Wow, very cool. Fantastic. Well, thank you again so much. And uh, let me see if we got any last questions here. I think we got them all. Uh, it looks like we did. So, all right, fantastic. Thank you, and uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us, and we'll see you all uh, next time. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.